How do you describe abortion? Well, in the United States right now, since Roe versus Wade, we've had about 60 million children die via abortion, the abortion industry. One of the organizations, Planned Parenthood, kills about 1,000 children every single day in our country. There's about 3,000 children who die every single day in our communities across the United States. And they're killed through abortion. There's a number of different ways that you can take the life of your child in our country through abortion. You can kill your child via a pill. They have medical means of abortion through a pill that you take into your body and it ultimately kills your child through uh, a medication. There's also means of abortion that are most common in terms of the surgical abortion where the doctor goes into the woman and essentially pulls the little boy or little girl apart limb from limb. So sharp instruments and tools are forced into the woman to tear the child into pieces, literally into pieces. It's a white f***ing privilege, racist f***ing male that doesn't stand for women's rights. Get that camera out of my face, see against God, ma'am, and you need forgiveness. Bullshit! You need Jesus. Bullshit! I have Jesus, I have forgiveness. You are out here tormenting people who are trying to take care of themselves. They're not That's taking you. care no, of no, themselves, no. ma'am. If you don't know every situation, you can't speak on it. I don't God know God said you're a sinner saved by grace, so there's nothing I could ever do that would make him not love me. There's nothing I could ever do to make him not let me into heaven. I've read that motherfucking book. I'm the Christian. You're berating people. You're not preaching love. You're not preaching acceptance. Okay? I've read the book. Don't come over here. Ma'am, love? Don't come over here. Love, is, come over love here. is not doing harm to neighbor. You're lost, ma'am. For me, for these children, I don't have any hate in my heart for you, Amber. 
I care for you. I want you to know Jesus. I want you to be forgiven, lost. I want you to be forgiven of every baby that you let in there to be slaughtered. I want you to be forgiven for every child that you have led to the slaughter. Every, every child that has their, has their arms and heads and legs torn to their body. Amber, I want you to experience forgiveness. I don't want you to be condemned. I don't want you to experience the wrath of God. I want you to be forgiven. I don't want you to be judged. I want you to be able to move out of a position that causes you to embrace such foolishness. Like when a person is talking to you about your position, you come with a cowbell and you put your face into your smartphone because you have no ability to engage. Just no, consider I don't it. Engage with crazy. Just, Sorry. just consider it. Well, there's I nothing wrong with being crazy. To engage, you don't. I just don't engage you don't. With crazy. No, you don't. You fucking know me. No, you don't. Bitch. Fuck you don't. You. That's the best Fuck you've you. got. You don't have any ability. Fuck you. There you go. And that's again another premier example of the Planned Parenthood supporter. Yep. Their response to challenges is F you, cowbell. No, this I is the best. Fuck you. Say this it. is the best. You can't say oh, it. Oh, absolutely. It, your response to a Christian who's trying to challenge your position is fuck you. That's the best you've got. That's the best you've got. And now, do you have a response? Why do you think that it's okay for a mother to lead a child into a place to have their body torn to pieces? You don't have an answer, do you? Planned Parenthood supporters, as you guys watch this live stream, Planned Parenthood supporters don't have any cogent argumentation, no coherent, meaningful worldview. They lead these women and these fathers into Planned Parenthood to destroy their own children. That's what you have at a Planned Parenthood location. What's important is that the world sees this is not the Planned Parenthood that you see with the political talking points. This is Planned Parenthood right now, live, in living color. No argumentation. No argumentation. I don't work for Planned Parenthood. You're a Planned Parenthood supporter? You're a Planned Parenthood. It's not a problem to be a liar. Amber, you've given that up when you gave up Jesus Christ. In your worldview, lying is fine. In your worldview, lying is not a moral failure. As a matter of fact, in your worldview, with your worship of Satan, lying is the premier example of honor. And there she went, ladies and gentlemen. I want you guys, hopefully, to see something. Planned Parenthood is built upon lies. It's built upon a bankrupt position that human beings ought to be able to murder their own children. And you might think that they've actually become creative enough to think about some answers that would be compelling. They don't have them. These people out here stand for the murder of innocent pre-born children. They do not have, see, there's a celebration. Did you see it? There's the fist pump, fist bu pump right there. I said, they stand for the murder of children. And they said, yes. This is the true face of Planned Parenthood. This is the true face of abortion in America. Amber, Errol, no answers. Just love of death. That's it. No argumentation. Christians, you can do this. You can bring the gospel to this place. You can do like people did this week in Las Vegas. They began abortion ministry, saved two children. You just need to be here with the gospel. You need to come. You need to speak the light of the gospel into this place. You need to reach these people with love because they are a part of the culture of death. Be a part of the culture of life. You guys can be forgiven. If you turn from your sins to the living God, you can be forgiven. This investigation of Planned Parenthood is based on false premises, one after another after another. It's time to stop wasting time, get on with meaningful work, and stop picking on women and trying to take their choice away. I yield back the balance of my time. The time of the gentleman has expired. We welcome our distinguished witnesses today. Do you and each of you swear that the testimony that you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And I'll now begin by introducing today's witnesses. The first witness is Dr. Anthony Levitino. Dr. Levitino is a board-certified obstetrician gynecologist 
Over the course of his career, Dr. Levitino has practiced obstetrics and gynecology in both private and university settings, including as an associate professor of OBGYN at the Albany Medical College. And Dr. Levitino, we'll begin with you. Welcome. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. Um, I only have five minutes, so I'm going to get right to it. Second trimester D&E abortions performed between roughly 14 and 24 weeks of gestation. Your patient today is 17 years old. She's 22 weeks pregnant. Her baby is the length of your hand plus a couple of inches. And she's been feeling her baby kick for the last several weeks. But she's asleep on an operating room table. You walk into that operating room scrubbed and gowned and after removing laminaria, you introduce a suction catheter into the uterus. This is a 14 French suction catheter. If she were 12 weeks pregnant or less, basically the width of your hand or smaller, you could basically do the entire procedure with this. But babies this big don't fit through catheters this size. After suctioning the amniotic fluid out from around the baby, you introduce an instrument called a sofa clamp. It's about 13 inches long. It's made of stainless steel. The business end of this clamp is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide. There are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. A d &E procedure is a blind abortion, so picture yourself introducing this and grabbing anything you can blindly and pull, and I do mean hard, and out pops a leg about that big, which you put down on the table next to you. Reach in again, pull again, and pull out an arm about the same length, which you put down on the table next to you. And use this instrument again and again to tear out the spine, the intestines, the heart and lungs. Head in the baby that size is about the size of a large plum, can't see it, but you pretty good idea you've got it if you've got your instrument around something and your fingers are spread about as far as they go. You know you did it right if you crush down on the instrument and white material runs out of the cervix. That was the baby's brains. Then you could pull out skull pieces. And you have a day like I had a lot of times, sometimes a little face comes back and stares back at you. Congratulations, you just successfully performed a second trimester d &E abortion. You just affirmed her right to choose. One more question, Dr. Levitino. Why did you end your practice of doing abortions? I did uh, over 1,200 abortions over a four-year period in private practice, now counting the ones that I did during my training. Um, I met my wife at, um, during my first year of training at Albany Medical Center. We got married about a year later and found that we had an infertility problem. After years of failed infertility treatment and several years trying to adopt a child, we were blessed with a, adopting a, a little girl that we named Heather. And, August of 1978. Um, as sometimes happens in those situations, my wife got pregnant the very next month and we had two children ten months apart. Um, two months short of my daughter Heather's sixth birthday, she was killed in an auto accident and literally died in her arms in the back of an ambulance. Anyone who has children might think they have some idea of what that feels like, but unless you've been through it yourself, you have no idea whatsoever. Um, I know people find it hard to believe, but uh, what do you do after disaster? You bury your child and then you go back to your life. And I don't remember exactly how long it was after my daughter died that I showed up at Albany Medical Center OR number 9 to perform my first second trimester d &E abortion. I wasn't thinking of it as anything special. This was routine to me. Um, but I reached in, literally pulled out an arm or leg and got sick. You know, earlier on I described stacking up body parts on the side of the table. It's not to, you know, gross people out, to use a simple term. When you do an, an abortion, you need to keep inventory. You have to make sure you get two arms and two legs and all the pieces. If you don't, your patient's going to come back infected, bleeding, or dead. Um, so I soldiered on and finished that abortion. And I know it sounds, as I said, hard for people to believe, but I'm, I'm telling you straight up my experience. You know, after over 1,200 abortions, first and second trimester up to 24 weeks and all the rest of it, and being very dedicated to it, for the first time in my life I really looked. I really looked at that pile of body parts on the side of the table. And I didn't see her wonderful right to choose and I didn't see all the money I just made. All I could see was somebody's son or daughter. And I stopped doing late-term abortions after that and several months later stopped doing all abortions. Thank you.